Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, micro pipettes. We'll start by examining a pasture pipette, uh, which is not much more than an eyedropper. These are sterile and are often used for uh, moving around media. So let's look at the units here. We have uh, one milliliter, and of course half of that is 0.5 milliliters or 500 microliters. Uh, then below that we have uh, 250 and 100. Now, uh, one thing we know about genetics is, of course, is that uh, it's operating with DNA, and DNA is very small. So a lot of the experiments that are conducted in genetics take place in, you know, a small quantity of liquid at the bottom of a micro centrifuge tube. Now, one useful skill is to be able to open and close a micro centrifuge tube with the hand that you are not pipetting with. So let's try that. Open and close. And it's also useful to be able to do two of them <laughs> in one hand. Uh, this is because you are pipetting from one uh, micro centrifuge tube uh, to another. And so we'll try to open and close two of them with one hand. Now this is a little bit tricky, so it's okay if you use a test tube rack. So we want to be able to open two of them, and that way we can transfer solutions from one to another. So let's try to transfer, let's say, 250 microliters uh, with the pasture pipette. That's certainly possible. We squeeze in the bulb of the pasture pipette, uh, dip it into our solution, and then pull up slowly until we get to 250 microliters. So that's possible, but you'll kind of notice here that it's difficult to get it precisely. And the sort of shaking that's, uh, you know, just sort of common to one's hand is causing it to go up and down a little bit there. So it's not very precise, but we can move that quantity. Now, uh, in order to move um, quantities of liquid between test tubes much more precisely uh, we'll need to use micro pipettes. I've got micro pipettes from a couple of different companies from BioRad which makes them for education and research and for and from Eppendorf. So these are very precise instruments that have a complex you know assembly of gears inside in order to uh, pull a very precise amount of liquid uh, from micro test tubes. And they also come with disposable tips that you can eject and throw away uh, uh, each time you're moving solutions in order to keep your solution sterile or to keep from contaminating uh, you know, one, uh, one test tube to another. So let's look at our BioRed micro pipettes. We'll start with the largest size, which, if you can see it here, says uh, 100 to 1,000 microliters. Uh, and of course, realize that 1,000 microliters is one milliliter. And we have sort of going down an order of magnitude 20 to 200. And finally, another order of magnitude uh, 2 to 20. On the Eppendorf side, they're labeled. Uh, you know, 1,000, uh, 110 microliters. And if we look at the scale here on the top, we've got uh, 100 to 1,000, 10 to 100, and 0.5 to 10. So also roughly one order of magnitude. And the colors on the, the colors on the, the, the sort of analog scale here and on the buttons uh, correspond to the colors of our tips. For our sort of 0.5 to 10, we have uh, white tips. For 10 to 100, yellow tips. And from 100 to 1,000, blue tips. Now, I've got these micro pipettes set for um, a volume intermediate in their range. Um, We've got, now remember again, we've got 2 to 20, 
20 to 200, and 100 to 1,000 uh, microliters. And as you can see here, on the 2 to 20, um, if I have this set for 5 microliters, we have 0, 5, and then the 0 is red, which indicates that it's, of course, beyond the decimal place. So that's 5 microliters. Uh, for the 20 to 200, I've got it set for 50 microliters. And as you can see, both, all the numbers are black. There are some hash marks there for um, you know, proportions of a single microliter. Um, of course, it's not as accurate as the one before. And for the big one, uh, from uh, 100 to 1,000, we've got this set for 500 microliters, but they have um, made the first zero red, which just tells you then you kind of need to start, uh, that your integers kind of start with the five. So we got five, zero, and then uh, when the, with the hash marks, uh, then zero. So that is 500 microliters. Uh, let's take a look at the Eppendorfs. So the Eppendorfs, rather than using uh, red and black numbers, uh, they used little lines. And so for the 0.5 to 10 microliters, we have, five, we have 0, 5, then a line, which is your decimal place, then two zeros. So you can kind of see how accurate uh, this is if, it, uh, if its accuracy is uh, down to 1 one hundredth of a microliter. That's pretty incredible. And of course, these, the accuracy uh, has been uh, checked. Uh, these are inspected from time to time to make sure that they're accurate. Okay, so on the medium range, the 10 to 100 microliter, uh, we've got 0, 5, 0, sla or line 0, so that's 50 microliters. And for the big one, uh, we've got 0, 5, 0, 0, so this means 500 microliters. Let's move, uh, let's say, 75 microliters from uh, one tube to another, and we'll use our sort of medium range uh, micro pipette to do that. This one's from 20 to 200, so we can definitely move uh, 75. So we'll turn the analog dial up to 75. Okay, and the medium range uses the yellow pipette tips, so we'll need to um, take the lid off. Now these are typically um, autoclave, so they need to stay sterile, so you put the lid immediately back on them. We'll um, grab the tube that we're pulling from, pop the top, and we will now use the button to extract 75 microliters. Now, the button has actually um, sort of two stops. There is, if you just press down, there's one stop, but there's a second stop, and I'll show you what that is for in just a bit. So the correct measurement is acquired by pushing the button down to the first stop. Then we will uh, dip the tip uh, into the solution that we're moving and slowly pull up. And you can see that there is a cone of sort of colored liquid. I chose a colored liquid for contrast there. Um, and you need to have no air bubbles in this cone for it to be accurate. So now we will grab the um, microcentrifuge tube that we're transferring it into, pop the top, and um, kind of dip the tip uh, onto, into the uh, receiving tube, and then press down to the first stop. And that, as you can see, got most everything. Every once in a while, there'll be a tiny little drop in the bottom, and the second stop gives you a little poof of air. Uh, which will help to eject all of the liquid out, thus ensuring that you have an accurate amount uh, in your tube. Um, and one thing that you might want to do is you might want to touch the tip to the side, which uh, ensures that uh, any drops that are sticking to the bottom will be pulled off. Close this, of course, to keep it sterile, and we want to eject our tip. In this case, the place where our thumb naturally falls Typically, uh, on your lap bench, you'll have a beaker, and you can just eject the tip right into the beaker. All right, let's try that with our Eppendorf uh, micropipette. Now, this is the middle of the range, and we're moving 75 microliters. Of course, it's 10 to 100, so this is the appropriate uh, micropipette to use. And so we'll just roll this up to 75. There we 
we go. Sorry that took a while. And we'll open up our box of yellow tips. Press to get a tip. Close the, the lid back so that it stays sterile. We'll open up our tube that we're pulling from with a quick uh, thumb flip. Uh, we'll set our pipette correctly on our hands. Now the two buttons here, uh, you can, it's hard to do this, on, hard to show you this on video, but there's the first stop, there's the second stop. So we'll go into the first stop, um, depress the tip into the solution and slowly pull up so that we have a nice cylinder, Notice, I mean a nice cone, notice there's no um, air bubbles. All right, close the lid, grab our tube that we're placing this into, come down to the, come inside, sort of depress the button to the first stop, um, and then go to the second stop to provide the poof of air, pull out, close the lid, and then eject our tip into our waste bin. So next uh, we're going, I'll just show you um, what the large pipetteur looks like and what the smaller pipetteur looks like uh, in use. Uh, we'll grab the big one from the Eppendorf company. Uh, this is the one that needs the blue tips and of course we're set at 500 uh, microliters. So we'll grab one of the blue tips, close the top back to keep everything sterile, um, depress to the first stop. All right, dip our tip into the solution that we're pulling from. Pull up slowly. As you can see, that's quite a bit more than we moved last time. It's about 500 microliters. Okay, and open our receiving tube. Place our tip inside. Depress slowly to the first stop. And then you can see that there's a little bit, I don't know if you can see it on the video here, but there's a little bit left in the bottom, so we'll use that poof of air to move that out. And then, of course, we will eject our tip, all right, into our waste bin. And then finally, uh, let's uh, move a little bit of liquid with our uh, smallest range micropipetter. So we'll need to use the very small tips, uh, which are clear, sort of, corresponding to, I don't know, the lack of color on the button here and here on the dial. So this is going to be five microliters. It's going to be quite a small amount, but this is typically the amount that you might have to move into, let's say, a gel electrophoresis unit and, uh, or a gel box, and it often needs to be done underwater. So it's good to practice these small ranges as well. So what I'll do here is uh, let's go ahead and move um, five microliters. So we'll go down to our first stop, insert into the liquid, and pull up slowly. And I don't even know if you can see this on the camera here with glass, but it's a, just a very small amount of solution. Uh, but you can see the cone there, uh, no uh, air bubbles. And um, let's go ahead and drop this one. How about we grab a new tube out of our bin here? All right, and we'll go ahead and drop this one, drop it in. And we'll kind of touch it to the side there. So maybe we can use the attraction of the liquid to the side to pull it off. So that was the first stop. Let me go ahead and press the second stop to just make sure all of it is out. And as you can see, five microliters is literally a tiny, tiny drop on the side of that tube. But um, as you know, that tiny, tiny drop could contain millions of DNA molecules.